morning! Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy and today I have the pleasure of having Kathy with me. I am excited for you to meet her. Tell us a little bit about your, you're quite a crafter in general, <laughs> right? Yes. And then you got into knitting late in life. Mm -hmm. So tell us kind of your crafting journey and how you got here. Okay. Uh, first of all, good morning, Joy. It's nice to be here. Um, I started out as a quilter back in 1975 in the heyday of all the, the bicentennial crafts. And from quilting, um, fast forward maybe 30 years later, um, my kids were in college, school, whatever, and I wanted to learn how to knit. And so why, what, all of a sudden, why did you want to learn to knit? Um, the boys went to school in New England. They went to college in New England. And there were no quilt stop, uh, shops in New England. There's, there's not many fabric stores in New England. Oh. Um, most of the shops that you see in the little towns are yarn shops. Huh. So um, I picked up some cotton yarn and started knitting dishcloths. My mother-in-law taught me how to knit dishcloths. And I probably knit, I would say, about 100 dishcloths before I realized there's got to be more to it than that. So um, I saw a sweater that I really liked, and you'll see that in a minute. Let's show it right um, now. Okay. okay. Um, I saw a sweater that I really, really liked, and um, I thought, eh, why not try it? So I bought the Lopi yarn, and I bought the pattern, and I learned how to read patterns, and this was my very first sweater, and my very first finished object Besides a dishcloth. Dish <laughs> um, Do you remember the name of the pattern? Uh, it's called Ros or Rose, R-O-S. It's a Norwegian name. I like the Norwegian color work patterns. Uh, my husband's family's heritage is Norwegian. Oh, is it? And so I love the, the color and the patterns, and I like knitting with the lopi yarn. I like that it's light, but yet it's warm. It can get wet and still keep you warm. Mm, yeah. And um, so we, I, this has been well loved and well used um, when we go camping and all kinds of winter. Things. Yeah, it's held up really so, well. Yeah, it has. So how, it about has. how old would you say this is? 20 years or more. Wow. Yeah, yeah this is about really, 20 years. That's great. I've never so, done a loopy sweater. <clears throat> I've, I just, I have... I can't get over the feel of the yarn. <laughs> oh, it does get softer. Um, this was really, really rough. Mm. It does get softer. And when you wear it, it doesn't feel as rough as you would think. You have to get used to wearing yeah, it. Yeah. And the other thing I do is I often wear a t-shirt underneath, yeah. a cotton t-shirt. Yeah. If I think it's going to be, you know, like one of those days where it's going to be itchy around my neck. Mm -hmm. My neck is the only really sensitive place right around in here. So if I think it's going to rub in there. And now I've learned to do short rows. So my collars fit differently than they do now. Okay. Um, there were no short rows back then. Right. So yeah. um, patterns have changed and knitting has changed. So my crafting has changed. Yeah. Along with, so, well, that's gorgeous. And thank you. what a first sweater. <laughs> that you. is amazing. <laughs> so I started with the quilting because I love to sew. From there I went to... All the other crafts and then like I said it wasn't until my boys were in college in New England that I thought I should pick up knitting they had enough quilts to keep them warm in the dorm rooms but I made the scarves and the hats to keep them warm outside ah well obviously you so, took to it like a duck to water yeah. because <laughs> I, I think it's the colors that we have now and the self-striping yarns and the variegated yarns and the twisted yarns and all those different things and not just solid colors. Mm -hmm. The color work keeps me going. Yeah. Um, it's exciting. It's, yeah, I want to see what's next. Yeah. And if I had to just knit a plain sweater and stockinette, I think it would be boring to me. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I like to use variegated yarns or self-striping yarns in different projects. I like to see what's next. Like in your sweater, I like to see mm -hmm. the next color I'm going to use. Yeah. And it keeps me motivated to get that project finished. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I get that. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Although I never would have started with a fair elf or a stranded sweater. <laughs> well, you know, who knew? 
somebody asked you to do something. Yeah, <laughs> you know. that's like I've heard so, some people. Uh, one of their first projects was a pair of socks, and I'm like, <laughs> really, socks? <laughs> what was your first project? Oh, probably a scarf or something. I don't even remember. Okay. Ba- I did, did baby blankets and scarves and. <clears throat> Square yeah. things, yeah. I didn't do baby blankets until twenty years later, and I went. It was so actually boring. it was actually <laughs> many years into my knitting before I actually made a sweater. Okay, but part of that was because we were on a real tight budget, mm-hmm. so pretty much the only yarn I used was what I could find at thrift stores. Right, and it was rare that you could find enough yarn to make a sweater out. That's of. that's true. I was fortunate enough to get the lopi when it was. Three dollars a skein. Oh yeah. You know, and now it's six or seven dollars a skein. It's still pretty inexpensive. So it's still inexpensive, but when I made that sweater, it was still relatively inexpensive. I was using a lot of Vanna's Choice mm-hmm. from Michaels and the yep. big box stores. Yep. And then I found yarn shops. Like I found fabric stores and quilt shops. I found yarn shops yeah. and <laughs> yarn festivals and <laughs> yarn conventions and you know then it was gone from there so <laughs> now do you still do your quilting yeah but I machine quilt a lot more I do a lot of smaller projects um placemats and napkin sets I still do baby quilts for all the relatives mm-hmm. coming in with new babies mm-hmm. Well, I won't tell you how fast it takes me to do a baby quilt because then the relatives will go, oh, it didn't take her that long. <laughs> so, but it doesn't take me long to do a baby quilt because mm-hmm. I don't hand stitch it. Okay. So yeah. it's, you know, yeah. <laughs> so now do you have like dedicated space at home for your, all wish. your, no, <laughs> I wish. And then the boys went to college and I had one of the smaller bedrooms turned into a craft room mm-hmm. and then we re- kind of are redoing the house and painting and putting new flooring in and all that and so all my craft stuff went down to the basement so I'm relegated back to the oh. dining room to sew again and I enjoy quilting in the living room I like to be where my husband is at night yeah. or whenever I'm knitting because we're yeah. both retired yeah. and I enjoy being in the living room even though I don't like Hogan's Heroes all that much <laughs> I enjoy sitting with him to knit <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, spending time together is, yeah. 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 So I, I have a little corner that I try to put as much behind the chair as I can. <laughs> but all the relatives know, so if anybody comes over, they, they know that's my corner. Right, so, right. Yeah, it's no big deal. When the grandkids come, everything goes down in the basement, though. Because uh, they're, they're, they're too little yet yeah. to understand. Yeah. So <laughs> Almost like having a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Well, so. tell us about this sweater that you're wearing. It's gorgeous. Um, I'm going to have to go to sure. my your little cri- my your cheat sheet. sheet, my little cheat sheet here. This is called Alpenglow. It's an Andrea Mowry sweater. Um, she designed it for Rhinebeck last year, the mm-hmm. New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And I'd never done a sweater for that, and I was going. So I thought, oh. I'm going to make a sweater this year and be part of that whatever's up on the hill. Yeah. So it was fun. I knit a size 5. I used needles uh, US 2 for the cuff and 4 for the rest of the sweater. I used Feederbrook Farms Entropy DK Mm. for the color work. The yarn was very, very nice. Mm. I really enjoyed it. Patagonia from Juniper Moon Farms is the brown. Okay. And Gadifra Sofrio, I hope I said that right. Um, is the, the, the green, um, she used a mohair in there. Oh. And, um, hazel knits fingering held double. I couldn't find an orange that I really, really liked or a burn orange that I liked. And I found this at Conversational Threads. And so I held it double to make up the DK weight. That's a beautiful color. Yeah. I just really, really liked it and I couldn't find it in anything else. Now, um, did, why did you want orange specifically for this? To go, um, you just had you knew that it would match. Well, there's or... there's parts of it that mm-hmm. have a burn orange in it, uh-huh. and I just like the color. And I thought for an autumn sweater, I wanted burn orange. Oh yeah, okay. So it's not very springy for now, but right. for, well, for yeah. fall it's great. I wanted those fall colors. Yeah. So stand up. Stand up. Okay. Sure. There's a corrugated ribbing at the bottom, nice. which I love yeah. to do, and there's the little. Um, it's a mosaic it's a stitch. Oh, Sorry. is it? It's like a slip stitch? 
Yeah, it's a mosaic. It's okay. not a, uh, yeah, it's a mosaic. So it's there's slip stitches in there. And then um, you have your regular color work. So I really, really enjoyed knitting this. It was one of those that can't wait to see what comes yes, next. Yes, yes. So it was fun. And then with the feeder book, every, it looks like almost every stripe was a different color. Yes. Coming up. Yeah. yeah. And I did take two skeins and I, I'm kind of, as much as I like the different colors in the variegate, in the yarns, I like to uh, kind of match when I can. Mm -hmm. So I took two different skeins so I could get the color striping to match oh, okay. a little bit. Yeah. So I kind of tried to take it, take it around. Yeah, so that the sleeves so, match the the body, or at least so the sleeves would match match each other. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I, I, I'm just like that. <laughs> hey, that's okay. So that's okay. It yeah. looks great. I love Thank you. It. Yeah, I really love it. Um, I wear it. It's gotten a lot, a lot of wear. Now, have you been to Rhinebeck before? Yes. Um, a few years. I went a few years before COVID. I think once with your oh, knitting on the bus? group. On the bus yeah. with your knitting okay. group. We have a mutual friend, so she invited me to go with her. Yeah. And I had been a, once maybe before that with another group of friends. I went last year. Sometimes it's a hit or miss. Sometimes I don't know that I'm going until there's an extra ticket somewhere. <laughs> and then, then I think, um, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> I've been to Maryland Sheep and Wool once. Mm. Um, and it was raining the day we went. It was very muddy. I know everybody says it's muddy. Mm -hmm. It was very it muddy. Was muddy. Yeah. Have you ever been? I've been, I think once, maybe twice, and that's where I bought the yarn for this swirl shawl. Oh, this is beautiful. <clears throat> Gorgeous shawl. Yeah, I talked about this in episode 44, but this was, this is a Melody yarn. Oh, okay. It's, I think, like a sock yarn, basically. Mm -hmm. It was on display at one of the booths. Actually, multiple booths there, I think, had okay. this, and the group I was in were all drawn to this shawl, and I think Maybe four of us oh, all wow. bought the yarn for yeah. the shawl, but I was the only one that actually made it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Joy is a finisher. <laughs> I am a finisher, yes. <laughs> Even if I end up not liking what I made, I still finish yes. it. Yes. <laughs> It'll but find a home thing. somewhere. That's a good thing. Mm. It is. It's good to finish. I don't like... I don't like to have too many whips. I have a few. Mm. Socks are one thing that I can have quite a few. Yeah. But eventually I do finish them. But bigger projects I like to finish and mm -hmm. use them or give them away mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So while I'm wearing my Birkin, which I also talked about in a previous episode, that was episode 10. And this is uh, by Caitlin Hunter. And the yarn I used for this, the main color is... Shepherd's Wool Fine from mm. Stonehenge Fibers, mm -hmm. and I would never use this yarn again mm -hmm. because, I don't know if you can see, but it pills like crazy. Yeah. And on episode 10, I actually gleaned it okay, and yes. cleaned it up, yes. and it looked pristine and brand new, and then within a, two wearings, it was covered with oh, pills again. That's disappointing. So it's become my, what I call, <clears throat> going out to the barn sweater. Oh. <laughs> And it, it's also, like, it's frayed along the cuff here. Mm. And then, I don't know if you can see, but on the back edge, it's all frayed oh, at the goodness. bottom. Oh, my goodness. So this yarn has not held up well. No. What a and shame, because the color work is beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed. Yeah. But, so I wear it uh, when I'm doing chores and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, what have you, um, <clears throat> you brought some things to show us, right? Mm -hmm, I did. What would you like to start with? How about my snowflake mittens? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a pattern by Tanis Lavalli. Lavalli? I'm not sure how Lavalli, to say her last name. name. Um, it's done with Cascade Sport 220, and I used a US 3 needle. The pattern did not come reversed. And it's one of those things that you turn your hand around this way. Oh. On the front of the the mitten, I would have had two mittens of the same front of the the pattern yep. would be the same. And so I took it to the copy machine and I reversed it. So I have two mittens that are mirror, that are mirror image. Oh. <laughs> and I did the, the needlework pattern at the bottom in mirror image as well. Mm. Because I didn't want both my mittens right. going, 
But the pattern didn't come that way. But the pattern didn't come that way. Yeah. No. I like what you did with that. And I like the Pico edge. Mm -hmm. That was really a lot of fun. I had never done a Pico edge. And then I picked up the stitches inside and I lined it with a really, really warm, fuzzy, this is Road to China Light. Oh. And they're just so, so warm. And they're so nice. I just, I love to wear these. Our kids live in Vermont. You'll hear me say that a lot. And I'm sorry if I repeat, but it's cold up there. <laughs> yeah. And I love wearing these mittens up there because they're windproof too. Oh, are they? They're very windproof. Oh. My hands never get cold up there. Now, did the pattern come with the lining or did you add that? I can't remember. Interesting. I'm sorry, I can't remember. No, that's okay. I think I might have added it because the mittens came out a little too big. Oh, uh-huh. And I thought I can add a lining, and I'd never done that before. Yeah. So I thought I would. <laughs> I I love how adventurous you are. Like, hey, these are a little big. Maybe I'll just put in a lining. I don't know how to do it, but what the heck? Well, <laughs> I love that. That's great. That's great. <laughs> and if it came with a lining, well, then <laughs> good for me. <laughs> I had a pattern. <laughs> but I really, really like these mittens. And it was fun. It's an older pattern. Mm -hmm. You'd really have to go back and ravel. What was the name again? Uh, snow fling. Snow fling. Okay. Yeah. And I have, it has a nice little snowflake pattern on the it back. It does. Yeah. And I just really enjoyed making these. These are a lot of fun. And I'd like to do another pair, actually, mm -hmm. in a woolier wool. I like woolly wools yeah. because of the color work. Yes. This blue tended to run a little bit. Okay. Um, so I'd like to do another pair and, and put a lining in because I really like that. Yeah. So. What else thank you, you Well, while we're on, uh, on, we're on color work mittens, I'll be right back. I'm back. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, I did an advent calendar. For my grandson, whoops, and there's 24 of these little mittens. We don't have to look at all 24. Cute. This was an advent mitten calendar by Kathy Lewinsky. And I use Knit Picks, Knit Picks Palette yarn okay. for the colors. I loved color work, and so I got my fill of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so every pattern's a little different. I have two grandsons in that family now. So I have to make another set of these mittens um, because they fight over, even though we put two things inside, they, it's, it's hard for them to choose what they're going to So you put two things take. in each mitten, mm -hmm. one for each grandson. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> one's older than the other. Um, this mitten in particular, I wanted to point out, I forgot which color was dominant. Okay. And so you can see the difference oh, in the dominance. Oh, yeah. Look at that. But, yeah. So there's, you have, you can go and see. She offers this pattern for free mm -hmm. on her website, mm -hmm. or you can buy the whole pattern on Ravelry. <clears throat> yeah, these, and, are, um, these are great. Yeah, they were, they were a lot of fun to do. I learned that I don't enjoy thumbs, <laughs> but that's okay. These are really fun, and every year, it's one. It's the first thing I hear. Grandma, do you have our mittens filled? Now, did you block so, these? I did in the beginning, mm -hmm. but now they're five years old, and so you blocked them when you first made them. Yeah, I made but a little, re but I haven't reblocked right. them. Okay. Um, I made a little cardboard insert, mm -hmm. and, um, and then glued it to a plastic piece of plastic because the cardboard wasn't get, sturdy enough. Yeah. So I used a heavier piece of mylar, and, and I used that. The other thing I liked about this was the Latvian braid. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of practice on Latvian braid, so that was fun. I enjoy Latvian braid very much. Did you know that I made these as well? I did. You oh, sent okay. me a note on those. Oh, did I? Okay. You did. Yep. So, They're did you so show yours? I, I, I can't did. remember which... But hold on a second. I'll get, go get them. Okay. Okay, so these are the ones that I made. Oh, these are beautiful. I love your color palette. This was Ba Ram U. Oh, I love this. Titus, oh, I think. Look at the difference in the size in yours. And did you use this, the called for needle? It was a one. US I think one. I used a one. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm a, new, I'm a loose knitter. Mm, okay. In general, I always have to go down 
needle sizes. Oh, these are gorgeous. I love this these. color palette. But then I ran out of the yarn. Uh -huh. So the last two, I think, I, I used scraps. And there were a couple oh. of patterns that I didn't like, so I substituted. So this is 20, 23. Mm -hmm. And then 24 is the main Oh, jerk. how beautiful. Yeah. That should be the, <laughs> the 24. You, you chose the, the <laughs> correct one on that, the, the color palette. So I was disappointed I ran out because I had one skein of each, the blue, the red, and the white. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't have enough to finish up the last two. Yeah. But Oh, they're beautiful. They were, like you, I, they were so much fun. Yeah. And when I saw them the first time, I knew right away... I have to make those. Yeah. But me, it took me, I think I started them in August. So there was no way I was going to finish them by Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I did the first 12 one year. And then I waited a whole nother year and then did the second 12. Okay. The so it took me two years to make these. Yeah. Oh, I knitted furiously. I was in Texas to visit my sister and I'm knitting at night trying to finish. I did four of them while I was out there. So I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. On a two week vacation. Yeah. So. Yeah, they were so much fun. Color work is just, I mm -hmm. love color work. Mm -hmm. That's your jam. Yeah. 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 Well, I have actually two squares from my afghan oh. that I'm working on. The first <clears throat> one here is square 13. What's well, beautiful. You want to talk so about it? This is Nora's Vintage Afghan, and I'm using the Cascade Eco Wool. Oh, it's gorgeous. <clears throat> and then this one is... Uh, square 14. Oh, that's beautiful. Which I really like this one, yeah. Yeah, this, the stitch work, it, I love the, the centers mm -hmm. of them. They're, oh, they're beautiful. Gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous, gorgeous. Not every square I'm like, oh, love this, love this, but probably every third or fourth square I'm like, oh, this is a really oh. neat pattern. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the rest of them, like this one, I like it. But I'm not like gaga over it. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one, I'm like, oh, this one's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. So that's fine. So that's square 14. <clears throat> I'm over halfway done now. Do you use a cable needle? It depends how many stitches the cable is. Okay. So if it's one by one or two by two or even maybe three by three, I will not. Oh, wow. But if it's, but if it's a four by four or if it's a mix, like pearl knit, mixes sometimes mm -hmm. I won't because the pearl stitches when you take them off the needle they like jump out yeah. in the wrong direction so it just depends on the cable mm -hmm. if I do or not because I've yeah. tried different cable needles mm -hmm. and I haven't found one that I liked or one that I can use comfortable comfortably mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the stitches either slide off or they get stuck the cable needles I use are these U-shaped ones. Oh, no, I don't use, I haven't used these yet. They're my favorite. So you put it on one and knit off the other yeah, side? Yeah, put it on the short end and then drop it front or oh. back and then knit off the long end. I learned something today. Yay! That's what I do. Thank you. And these are the only kind I use. <clears throat> I do have, like I have one of these. Yeah, they... My stitches get stuck. No, no, I don't like them. I have it, but I never use it. Yeah. So I should, probably should gift it to somebody who would want it. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I think, maybe three of these. These mm. are actually kind of hard to find. Uh, you can get plastic ones yeah. that are U-shaped, but getting these nice metal ones is tricky. Hmm. I'll have to look for those. So I, I guard them with my life because yeah. they're my favorite cable needles. Yeah, and, and I would too. Hard to find. Yeah. I would too. Well, what else do you have to show? Uh, another one. This is a little scarf shawlette that I made. I made one for my sister and one for myself. Um, she doesn't do knitting or anything. And we were going to travel together. So I thought it would be fun for us to both have the same scarf. She's in Texas and it's called Sister Act. And I thought it was a perfect... Charlotte to make for the two of us yes. to wear. They're made from, uh, it's Barnyard Knits yarn. She's an indie dyer from Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I think from Pennsylvania, pretty sure. Anyway, um, it's called denim, and we were going to wear denim jackets and do the whole thing together. And this is Ravelry Red, and it's a fun pattern. Um, it's by Britta 
and I can't say her last name. I'm going to let Joy maybe post some of these things yeah. at the end. And it was just a pattern on Ravelry. It was a free pattern that I found. So did you do the same colorway for both of your scarves? Mm -hmm. yep. So you really did match. Yeah, we really did match. That's fun. Yeah. Now do you just so. have one sister? I have two sisters. Uh -huh. um, one's in local and one's in um, Texas. Uh, the one in Texas is uh, will wear knits. She'll wear the... My other sister isn't the type to wear hand knitted things, so. Now your Texas sister does she live in a place that gets cold? Um, in the winter it does. It San does. Antonio gets a little chilly. Okay. She calls it cold where she'll wear her turtlenecks and her sweaters. For me, it's fall like all year, mm. but it does get cold. Mm -hmm. And they did have some snow and ice this year, so. I really like these colors. Yeah, they were just. I don't use red very often, but. I know she likes red, yeah. so I went to use the red. Yeah. So it was fun. That's nice. <clears throat> well, I have a pair of socks that <clears throat> I finished. Oh, these is, are beautiful. This is called Bamboo Pop. <gasps> oh, they're so soft. From Universal Yarn. So it's a bamboo cotton nylon blend. Mm. I like the striping, too. I thought you would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I did like you did. You inspired me because in the past, I, when oh. I do the striping, I usually do a short row heel, but you had done just a regular heel with mm -hmm. your stripes, so I tried that with this pair, inspired by you. What do you think? I'm still on the fence. However, you can see that the the, the change between the yellow and the blue yeah. is dramatic no matter what. Yeah. So I think even if I had done the short row heel, it still would have been a very... Mm -hmm. dramatic mm -hmm. switch like even right. in the toe here where it goes from yellow to blue it's yeah it's similar to what the heel mm -hmm. is yeah so it's not really a fade because like the other colors kind of fade into right. each other but the yellow blue switch is is very dramatic yeah so i don't think it would have made a difference and it's fine mm -hmm. i'm happy with it yeah i like it Bought this yarn <clears throat> at a shop called Finnegan's Run in Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is where my sister lives. And ah. these socks are for her. They're for my sister. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I prefer the heel flap and gusset mm -hmm. over the short row mm -hmm. or um, afterthought, afterthought yeah. heel. Yeah. Um, I like the way that fits me. Yeah, I like the way it fits too. I also prefer it, but depending on what I'm doing, I'll substitute. We're on socks. I'll show you sure. some socks. This is a one sock. I don't have the other one down. I just wanted to do something springy. Um, it's and very springy. I used Lantern Light Sock Set in Plumeria. And I used a size 1 US 2.25 millimeter. Mm -hmm. I read, did a regular, almost all my socks, if I use sock yarn like this, are done in 64 stitches. And I used 70 rows for the leg and then I do the heel flap and gusset and then I usually do either 60 or 65 rows for the foot depending on the yarn because mm -hmm. some are is finer than mm -hmm. others and I like this it's the first time I ever did a um, pheas pheasant I have partridge I have partridge I knew it was a bird and I have partridge heel and it's the first time I had ever done that and I really enjoyed doing that it was a lot of fun I like it but you have to pay attention. Yes, yes. And it's you have not to like a regular no, slip. No, not at all. Because <laughs> if you get one off, yep. you've got to take it all out. At least I do. Yep, yep. Um, and I liked it because I could do it. It came with the, the sock set. Oh, okay. Had a little... So the heel and toe are the coordinating colors. Coordinating color. colors, yes. Mm, okay. You can see on the... Uh, if you turn it around, you can see how I mark my, my rows. I put a marker every 10 rows. So then I don't have to go back and keep counting. And then my socks are always even mm -hmm. in the rows. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that when I first started knitting socks or sleeves. Mm -hmm. I just didn't think of it. Yeah. So you can go by inches, but when they're blocked or, or sometimes washed, they stretch differently. Yeah. And then I'd have weird fitted <laughs> socks. <laughs> so. <laughs> and where did you said you bought that yarn where? Uh, this is at our local shop in Phoenixville, Pearls of Wisdom. Okay. I like to support local shops yeah. as well as shops when I go on vacation or when we go to visit our boys. Um, mm -hmm. I like to shop local in the local shops rather than the big box stores. Yeah. 
because I want to see those yarn shops stay. I know, me too. I, yeah. I wish I could buy more <coughs> yarn, but, yeah. but yeah. when I do buy yarn, I try to buy yeah. small, either local yarn stores or local farms or whatever. Right, you know. right. Mm -hmm. The other thing I like to do, or the other place I like to go to, is um, Conversational Threads. I know you mm -hmm. shop there often. Yep. I like Wooly Wool. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of woolly wool, they like do. the rustic wools. Yeah. And I really enjoy knitting with those, mm -hmm. especially for the color work. So I, so I would say that pearls and conversational threads are my two local yarn mm -hmm. shops. This is another pair of socks. Um, this was a sport weight yarn, so this was a 56 stitch sock. Pretty much made the same as the other ones. This is Woolens and Nosh, and I really like the striping on that. It is very much... And I don't know how these women do those self-striping. I know I've seen it done on, on videos or on YouTube you? videos. I've never watched it. But, but to see them do this type, I mean, it's amazing to watch the work that goes into a self-striping Well, this is yarn. like, this is mass-produced, whereas that's a hand dye, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and she's, she's from Vermont, near where my kids live. I really enjoy knitting with that. I almost got the other one done last night, but I didn't. I just couldn't knit any more last night. So. At some point, you got to call it quits. <clears throat> yeah, and you have to go to bed. <laughs> now, this is your standard heels. Slip, yes. Slip one, knit one. Yes. Not Regular. the Eye of Partridge, yeah. Correct. As, as I've tried the Eye of Partridge a couple of times, and as much as I like it, I just, I always get off a stitch or whatever, so mm -hmm. I kind of like... You know, nobody's looking at my heels. No, they don't. They don't. And I probably, the only reason I did that was because it was a solid yarn. I wouldn't have done it in a striping because oh, of the, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And I just wanted to try it. I saw. So um, is this the first time you've used that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I think, like you, you know, who looks at the bottom of my foot? <laughs> so, <laughs> except other knitters. <laughs> so. Well, I have, uh, I showed <clears throat> the start of this in my last podcast, but I finished it. So this is my entrelac. I call it a scarf. The pattern is called Entrelac Shawl with Tassels by Eva Martinson. Oh, this is stunning. It, I used the color changing yarn is from Feederbrook Farm. It's their Entropy mm. DK, which is the same as what you yeah. used in your sweater. Yeah. yeah. And then the solid color purple is Scout from Kelborn Woolens. Oh, I love that yarn. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I originally was going to kind of knit until I ran out of yarn and then do the I cord with a, like a third skein, which is what the pattern calls for. However, when I got to this top row, I knew that I did not have enough left of the Entropy DK to do squares. Oh, okay. So I did the top triangles with the Entropy DK, and then I had enough of the purple to do most of the I cord. And then on the, so the top is all solid purple, and then on the bottom, <laughs> I was alternating oh. the Entropy DK with the solid purple. So I contrasted each. So the purple square squares had the color changing yarn and the color changing yarn had the purple yarn. So I was alternating back and forth. And then I had enough to do the tassels. Hmm. I used up every last scrap of the feeder brook and I have this much oh left my goodness. of the scout. <laughs> wow. So I really I have to show up. I managed I had good yarn management on this one. You sure did. Wow. And I sometimes I like not having much left or not. Oh, yeah, because then you know, what then, are you going to do with your little right. scrappy ball? So I made it. I knew it would be like scarf-like, which is what mm -hmm. I prefer because I'm not really a shawl wearer. So I can wrap this so it's basically twice around my neck. And then cover it up in the front, and it's perfect to wear oh, with a coat, your coat mm -hmm. or a blade, even a yeah. jean jacket. That would look so good. Yeah, cool. yeah. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now, like the hat, I I talked about the hat in my last podcast. It would fit me when I made it, but then when I blocked it, it grew, mm -hmm. and then it was too big. So this also grew a lot, but because it's a scarf, like who cares? Right. right. So I wonder if it's. Well, now, scarves always grow when you block them. They always get longer. 
So it could be partly that it's a scarf and partly just the entrelac fa fabric. I wonder, oh. just simply by blocking it, mm -hmm. it expands because it's such a textural fabric. When it first comes off the needles, it's very 3D. Mm -hmm. And then when I blacked it, of course, now it's more 2D. It's very flat. Right. So it, it grew. So if I make another entrelac hat in the future, I'll have to try and think about like how much smaller I have to make it yeah. for it to fit my head. <laughs> this is really beautiful. But I love it. I really like that. And this yarn I bought at mm. Crazy For You when I was in oh. Maryland with Janet for Arna and Carlos. So this is the Scout. And then this is the Peterbrook Farm. I've always wanted to use the Feederbrook farm, and this is the, the first time. I mean, I've been lusting after this yarn for literally mm. years. This is the first time I've actually used it. I just find it amazing how it, how the blocks, you know, how the, the colors yeah. in Entrelac, it's just, I've tried it. Have you? But I haven't been real successful with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's something that I'd have to sit and work. Now that I'm retired, I could do that. Mm. Take but the time I, yeah, to really figure yeah, it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Just beautiful. Thank you. You have a shawl over there as well, right? Uh, yes, I do. This is from Casa Pinka. It's called Snarkometer. She has some unusual names for her <laughs> shawls. This was a mystery. So I got pieces of it every week for whatever, how six, eight, ten weeks. Mm -hmm. And it was really a lot of fun because every clue was a different stitch. Mm -hmm. So I learned multiple stitch patterns. And in this was even multiple needle sizes so that it would stay the oh. same width. Yep. And I really enjoyed making this shawl. It's done in fingery weight yarns. I used needle sizes four and six. I used four different colors. Chelsea Lux was the yarn, this is a variegated, mm -hmm. it's called Stiletto, and okay. I can't remember, and I don't have the labels anymore, but Chelsea Lux is also an indie dyer, mm -hmm. and then Less Traveled Yarns, which unfortunately I've heard that she's not going to be dyeing yarns anymore, oh. and I love Less Traveled Yarns, but there's always something coming down the road, yes. <laughs> so that was the whitish gray, it's not exactly a pure white. Okay. It had a little gray, so it picked up the gray in the variegated yarn. And then I used Malabrigo sock for the navy and gold. Oh, okay. Uh, they're both Malabrigo. And I love the, I, I just really enjoyed all the pattern changes. And the, the, she has slip stitches and there's little bitty cables and there's lace knitting. And um, here's another lace pattern. It was just a lot of fun. And her patterns teach you a lot. It's, they're fun. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed making this. Now, did you pick out these colors yourself? I did. I went off the, the variegated oh, okay. one, yeah. the, this one. Mm -hmm. I had the gold, and I wanted to use stash. I didn't want to have to go out and buy more because, well, you know, we all try to use stash. And I only ended up with a little bit of, you know, maybe 20 grams or 30 grams left of each color. So it was good. I, really I guess enjoyed that's, it. Yeah, that's that's why it's so cohesive because this variegated has the blue and the gold and a little bit of white in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's and I, great. I just really enjoyed knitting it. It was so much fun. So and now uh, do you wear it? I do. I almost every morning oh, when I knit, okay. I I put this in our in my chair. This is in my knitting chair. When I come down in the morning I wrap it around me while I knit. I didn't know if I would wear a square shawl, but I wear it every morning. It's just enough to cover my shoulders. Well, the thing with my this shoulders. one is, see how narrow this is? Yeah. This is too narrow to really wear, like, to wrap around your shoulders. Right. I have tried, tried, tried. Yeah, this is just a little bit longer. It's, well, quite a bit longer, yeah. I would say. It's a much better width. Yeah. Yeah, so this one I usually end up folding double like this, and then I just wear it as a scarf. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I wish it was a little bit long, uh, wider, but I'm, hap I'm 
really oh, you would even weight. want it a little bit wider. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had a friend that made this in DK weight, and so it was considerably bigger. <laughs> well, but, with and sh four skeins of DK. Right. I mean, that's practically enough to make a sweater with. Right. So it was a lot bigger, and she used it as a lap lap mm. quilt. Mm. So that or a lap blanket. That would yeah. be nice. If you've never tried a sampler type uh, knitting project, Joy likes to do the, the afghans mm -hmm. with the sampler blocks. Yep. And I enjoy these. And even then, I've seen sampler sweaters. Mm -hmm. They look like they'd be so much fun to knit. Yeah. Um, and you learn so much from them. Mm -hmm. So try it. And what's that last thing you have over there? Last thing. I have knitted for a while, and I enjoy sock yarn and I've made a lot of socks and I'm gonna have to stand up for this yep one. yep this is a scrap blanket and it's over six feet long so we won't be able to open the whole thing but this is half of it and I didn't follow the directions in that I only used one row for a color okay but there's a reason for that and what I did, um, I had a so, lot of minis. Sorry, back up. Yep. What did the directions say? The directions said to do two rows of each color. Okay, and you did one. And I did one row of each color. Okay. That was so you only had, you went over and back, and you only had the ends on one side. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. I had these little teeny seven gram minis that I'd gotten in a jar somewhere on a trip. And it was a big jar of these little minis. And seven grams wasn't enough to go over and back, but it was enough mm -hmm. to go over. Okay. So I did each row. That was a lot of ends to tie in. I'm sure it was. Oh, my goodness. Well, now this is crochet. Yeah. Could you have, like, crocheted the ends in as you went? Some of them I tried, and, and I did, but then I ended up doing a, a crocheted edge binding, so it hides all the edges. Uh. But still, it was a lot, yeah, a lot of edges. Lot, yeah. or, um, well, especially if ends. every single row is a different. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Um, I did 13 rows of color, and then I did three rows of the creamy speckle. That was from the Sheepy Shire, Harvest Moon. The Sheepy Shire is also from Pennsylvania. She's from up near Scranton. She's an indie dyer. And I really like using her yarn. And so that was the yarn that I used to bring it all together. So, and then uh, you have it along the edge, and then I put that along the edge. And my husband uses this all the time, he likes the weight of it. Yeah, it's it was a fun blanket, and it used up a lot of scraps. I can see that, yes. <laughs> so, so, your edging was mm -hmm. that part of the pattern, or did you, did you add that? I added that, so it's a multiple of three plus two stitches to turn. Okay, and I used a size F, I'm pretty sure I used an F crochet hook. Single stranded? Single strand. Mm -hmm. Single strand. So I actually crocheted before I knitted. I crocheted years and years and years ago. So I still had all my crochet hooks. Yeah. And since it's crochet, it's basically reversible. It's the same on yes. both sides. Yes. Which is nice. Yes. And a great way to use up that stash. Yes. I'm always on the alert for stash buster. Crochet uses up a lot more yes. yarn than knitting does. It does. Yeah. So. Yeah. Way to burn yes. through your stash. Yes. <laughs> well, then you can buy more. <laughs> That's look right. What I, look That's... what I used, Ty. Now I can go buy more when we're on vacation. <laughs> so. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I found a new yarn store to me. Oh, I've heard of that. It's I've called heard of Yarning that. Town, and it's in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. Clever name. Yes. <laughs> It's been open a year, she told me. Oh. So with, I guess that's why I haven't heard of it. It hasn't been around yeah. very long. And like a newer shop, it's not as well stocked as a mm -hmm. conversational threads might be. But she has some nice yarns, and she has a huge variety from... She carries some big box yarns, like Lion Brand. Oh. But then she also has Kelborn Woolens. She had the mm -hmm. Scout. So I was... <clears throat> Considering if I ran out of the scout for my entrelock shawl, I would run down there and get another oh, okay. <laughs> so she has a lot of different stuff. And what I got from her, I got three different things. These two are 
private label, so they have her name on them, Yarning oh. Town. So these are from Ooh. a mill. This one is called Hodgepodge, hmm. and what it is is it's mill ends. So okay. every skein is different <clears throat> because it's whatever's left after processing yarn. They take the ends and turn it into this hodgepodge. Hmm. So it's got all the different natural colors. It does. And some Ooh. of some of them even have like a strand, like here you can almost see a little green in there. Yeah. So that some of them do have a little bit of dyed yarns in them as well. Mm -hmm. So every skein is different and she has like a whole little cubby full of this yarn. So I thought wow. that was neat. And then I paired it with this, which is also a private label. This one is Angora Blend. Now, I don't know what it's blended with because it doesn't oh, wow. say. I'm assuming it's wool. Yeah. So it's really soft and it has that Angora halo to it. Yeah. And I think it would pair well with this. This is a little, this is more rustic, whereas this yes. is really soft. I so think it would be really beautiful. I'm not sure actually oh. if I would use them together or not. Mm. And I'm not sure how the yardage compares because there's very little information on it. Hmm. <laughs> on these labels I'm assuming they're probably I think she told me they do everything 200 yards so was it the same mill yes oh okay Blue okay. Mountain Fiber Farm I think oh she said it's somewhere in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. that does yarns and then oh it's beautiful so that's cool yeah I don't know what I'll do with that and then I also <clears throat> picked up, this is from Kate May oh, Fiber Company. Oh, fun. And this is one of those, so she's an India dyer from New Jersey. And this is one of those skeins that's basically one color and then it has these pops of other color in it. So I want to use this yarn for one of those assigned pooling Oh, patterns. how much fun would that be? Yeah. <gasps> oh, wow. I have to decide, first of all, which assigned pooling pattern I want to mm -hmm. use and then figure out. I mean, this is a lot of yarn. So what? Well, it's 100 grams, 463 yards. I yeah, put my glasses on. yeah that's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> I want something that will use the whole skein. Right. Even down in here, it goes into the reds. It does. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. That's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see what you knit with that. Now, you recently so, got some yarn too, right? We just came back from Vermont, and I watch a podcast. I guess that's what they're called, podcasts, because <laughs> that's what we're doing. A podcast from White River Junction, Vermont. Do you remember the name <laughs> of the podcast? Uh, it's called Junction, no, I think they use Junction Fiber Mill. Okay. I think that's the name. I'll if, look it up. Yeah, if you go in. Yeah. The two women, they each have their own sheep, and they bought a mill that was in Richmond, Vermont, and they moved all the equipment to White River Junction, Vermont. Now they also produce their own yarns. And I love their podcast, and once a month they have an open mill where you can go and you can see what they do, and then they open their store in the front of the mill where you can go in and buy things. I didn't get to the tour, but I did get to buy some yarn because they sell to Vermont shops. Mm. So it was so much fun. The mill is by a railroad junction, and that's why it's called Junction Fibers, White River Junction um, in Vermont. And their yarn is called Making Tracks. And this is their own mill spun and dyed yarn. And I have two skeins of this. This is in the pebbles colorway, and it's similar to the entropy that we've been mm -hmm. talking about, mm -hmm. um, the way it's done, but I liked it because it's their yarn. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know where they're, this came from their sheep, and I thought that was really cool. I have this, and then I also bought, this is called Constellation, and it's also from, and this has some really pretty purples and blues and grays in it. And I have an idea for a sweater with this, and this I want to do another one of these sweaters. Oh. Um, but I want to use blues in the neck and mm -hmm. in the and in, in here, and I want to use a creamy color. I wanted a, a more summery 
springy sweater. Oh, and then it'll be and more then, subtle uh, as yes, well. Yes, this will be more subtle. Yeah. So I thought that was a lot of fun. It's really pretty. I like the. I really like this purple color. Mm -hmm. I don't use purple that often, and I just was drawn to it. Yeah. So, and then this yarn is also a local Vermont yarn. It's from Maple View Farm Alpaca. They use the leftover fibers from Darn Tough socks. Darn Tough is a brand name that's made in Vermont. They're U.S. made socks. Okay. So they use the leftover fibers from the socks and mix it with their alpaca, and you get these little pops of color from the sock fibers. So when it's milled, they put in the sock fibers. And you can, I don't know if you can buy roving, but I just thought this was such a pretty color. Yeah. And I thought it would be really pretty to make a hat or even make just plain mittens. Maybe put in a cream color for the a stripe. It's, it's a beautiful tweed. Yeah, it is. I'd love to get enough for a sweater mm -hmm. quantity. Mm -hmm. They had a gray, a really light gray with really bright color flecks that were so pretty. So this is a blend, 43% alpaca, 42% mm -hmm. wool, right. which is it's good. I was going to say you wouldn't want to use 100% alpaca for a sweater. No. Yeah. Number one, it's very, very warm. Yeah. And number two, they don't give. Mm -hmm. Alpaca doesn't give. Yeah. So that's why I was thinking maybe for nice mittens. Blend. And if I made with a, a lining, they'll be super warm, but the lining would also help it from stretching out too big. I and then think. it says 15% DTS. I guess you just have to know that that's darn tough sock. There we go. You know what? I didn't even know that. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. <laughs> I, I really do like to shop local when we go places. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to shop local, as I said before, when I'm home. Because that supports our, yes. our yeah. local fiber. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have these fun yarns like this. That's right. You know? Yep. Well, that is all we have for you today. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you for, so much for Kathy for being on the podcast with me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you made me, I was a little nervous in the beginning, but I've had so much fun. Yeah. Well, so. have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Happy knitting.